Hi everyone, I want to introduce you to my new Fujifilm X-T4. So this one has the 16 to 80 f4 lens on it, which I got as a kit lens, although it's by itself, I think, an $800 lens. It seems kind of high for a kit lens, but uh, this is what I decided to purchase to replace my old cameras. Now, this was quite a surprising decision for me, considering the fact that I have been a Canon shooter for about 25 to 30 years. And that is part of the reason why I'm switching to this, actually, is because I was a Canon shooter. So let me show you what I have, though, other than this camera and what I'm moving up from. So the camera that I bought just before this one was this one right here. This is the Canon 90D. And this is a fairly new camera to me as well. And I was using this for primarily time-lapse videos, which uh, it works really well, especially with this flash right here, which I really needed for these time-lapse videos that I do in the dark. I wanted a flash that was just strong enough to get some, some light in there, but I didn't really want to use a strobe, which you know might have a battery pack. Some of them do plug in, but some of them had battery packs. But as I was using this, I realized some of the shortcomings that this camera has. I was really hoping to make this my permanent camera in all situations, but... I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Uh, it has, you know, 4K recording. It has 1080p recording. It takes fantastic photos as expected. You know, it has a standard command dial right here, you know, which allows you to flip between all the modes. It has your nice screen on top. I'm very used to this setup. After all, I came from this camera right here, which is a 50D, which I finally wore the shutter out on um, after, you know, about 400,000 exposures, um, doing time-lapse photography and some other photography. It wore out. The shutter wore out on it, and I was like, well, I could spend about $150 to $200 to get it fixed, but I never felt that this was a great camera. Um, I felt that this was one of the weaker ones I owned as far as uh, Canon cameras. It never really, t like, I, I found that it hunted a lot sometimes with, with taking photos. I found that some of the times it would take bl photos that were blurry. Um, I just was never really enamored with it. I do like the style of this. I feel like it actually has a very solid camera. I really like that um, compared to the Rebel that I had before, which I don't have anymore, but I had a digital Rebel uh, for many years before I got this 50D. Um, I wanted also the, the instant on part of this and a few other things. I really wanted the you know extra modes a little bit faster, especially with my kids running around. But that's the reason why I got this camera right here. Now, going back and forth, I just want to talk about this also a little bit. This camera, and I don't know why, it does not feel... Now, this one's definitely lighter, which I don't mind. Lightness doesn't mean a camera is worse, but this feels plasticky. Um, it doesn't feel as sturdy as this one does. And I don't know if it, maybe it's just there's the grips are a little softer or what it is, but it just feels like everything on here just feels like it's plastic, even though I know it's not. This one just feels more solid. Now, this one weighs a little bit more, but at the same time, I expected this one to kind of fit in with this almost exactly the same, but I feel like this is a little bit different, but I don't feel it moved in a good direction as far as the uh, the way it works. I just find like it's a little harder to use. This little wheel here is kind of really hard. I end up clicking this button all the time, this directional keypad when I'm trying to use it. Um, I don't really like the start stop back here for the video. I'd much rather use the, the trigger and maybe there's a way to set that, but uh, you know, it's just, I don't know. For some reason I was never quite as comfortable with this as I was with this one. And really the reason why, and I want to take you, take you to my first camera here. So I'm gonna move these out of the way and I just want to compare here. So this is my, my new Fuji film that I have. And right here in this package is my first camera that I ever had which was actually my dad's camera, and he's letting me, he let me use it. And this is a Canon FTB. So this is an old manual camera. I have a ton of lenses for it. This is what I learned to take photos on. I remember, you know, this wheel right here to adjust things, you know, as far as the shutter speed. I remember, you know, adjusting the aperture. If I take this off right here, you can adjust the aperture right here, you know, and this just reminds me so much of this camera. Now, there are obviously I have the ISO adjustments, but I have, you know, the shutter speed, shutter speed, aperture, aperture. And then, you know, this one has that the, the kind of the bad button here. I actually have a little concave uh, piece that I added here to, for the uh, shutter. But I mean, like this has, you know, the adjustable shutter. I mean, it just rem this reminds me so much. And it's amazing that I had to switch camera companies to go back to what I really liked. I mean, and I know that some people don't, but I did like this setup 
and I liked using my film cameras. Now this makes me seem probably old. I do like having, as you can tell, it's an auto and auto and auto right now. I love having auto modes. And I did like having this command dial on here to be able to switch it into the green auto mode. It was very easy for my wife to use in that way. But I do miss being able to just look down and just click a button and just, oh, it's changed. It's changed instead of having to play with these command wheels on this one. So this, this has these, these dials and they change depending on what you set these two down here at times. So it's just, I never really, I never really felt co as comfortable with manual mode because there was times where I wouldn't know what I needed to flip. And this one, I don't have that issue. So, and then there's the other factor that this body, even though it is smaller, even though it is lighter than this one right here, this Canon 90D, this feels more solid in my hand. Um, I do like the deeper grip on this. I mean, my fingers can go all the way, and I do like that on this one. Let me move this camera back here. But I do like that this has this deep grip, and this does not. That's the only thing I feel that these, these Fuji films are missing is, is the deep grip. Now, I want to just talk a minute about the X-T4 versus the X-T3 and the X-S10. Now, I decided to go with this one for a multitude of reasons. First off, I had to have the flip screen because I actually do a lot of video, so I had to have that. You know, and that's one of those things that you know I just had to have before I could, you know, I, I wasn't gonna get the X-T3 because of that. If you were a 100% film photographer, uh, you know, as far as uh, no, no video mode, I should say, instead of film, I should say no video mode, uh, the X-T3 might be good for you. I do like having these flip out screens. It's one of the things that I really, didn't like about this uh, this Canon 50D, uh, you know, it, it just, without having that flip out screen, it really, like, I think it was in the 60D they had the flip out screen. I really wish I'd waited another year or so to get that, but, you know, you get what you get. Um, I like the flip out screen. That's why I ended up with the X-T4. Now, the X-S10, that is very similar to this, and I really went back and forth on whether to get it. It's a lot cheaper, which I did like, but it was missing a couple things. One was weather sealing, which I don't always use my cameras outside, but I am planning to make a trip with camping and things like that. And it's nice to know that that weather sealing is there just in case, especially dust sealing. That's really what I'm more concerned about is dust getting into the body and ruining things. Uh, then there's also the fact that this could record in 60K. Now I'm recording this on my uh, old camcorder, which I had uh, retired really, because you know I switched over to the, the 90D to record. And then it was like, oh, well, then I got this. And, you know, now I'm using this typically to record, but I still have this as a backup or as even a secondary camera, which I will use it for when it's not doing time-lapse photography. So, you know, that's, but those are the reasons why I ended up with this X-T4. So far, I'm very happy with it. I do feel, and I'm gonna just say, I do feel Canon gets some things right. Um, I feel, as I said, this deep grip, I really like. I like the fact that they have a lot of inner lenses that you can go and purchase for them. I like a lot of things about the Canon system, but Fujifilm has really converted me because of them matching up with my old Canon that I used for many years until I got a, uh, a film Rebel that my parents bought me. But uh, I used to take this to all of my uh, all of my family functions and take photos of everyone, and then my parents would get triples of everything. And the next time we all get together as a family, you know, with a big family, they'd put all the photos on the table. They keep one set for themselves and let everyone just grab whatever they wanted. Now, part of the reason why um, my parents did actually buy me a new one is that this one was, and this was before me, I did not do this. My dad broke the, uh, this little piece right here that would hold the flash on the top. And because of that, um, I really felt, uh, or I should say, they really felt that we needed a flash because I would always be like, okay, we have to take it outside. We gotta take lots of photos before the sun goes down so I could get photos of everyone or you have to stay really still. And that's when they decided to get me one with a flash. But uh, this, this camera was a phenomenal camera that I really enjoyed learning on. And, you know, I know that people today don't really have a lot of these, uh, these lenses and stuff like that. In fact, this one is in pretty bad condition as far as like this really needs to be cleaned. And, uh, you know, the, the case is all coming apart and everything. But I, I've, this was a great camera when I was using it. So, you know, I'm really happy with my Fujifilm as it reminds me of this camera. And as I said, I know that makes me seem old, but I learned on one of these old, old cameras, you know. And uh, it's nice to have something very similar. So that's, that's really what I wanted to talk about. You know, I know this is just my opinion. I don't think this is a bad camera. I think this is a perfectly fine camera. I just think for price point, I think this one's a little better. Um, 
Now, I will say I did not look at the full frame cameras from Canon. I already have a lot of EFS glass and EF glass uh, for Canons. And, you know, I've got one of my Sigma lenses right here. This is actually the one that I typically use, which was a 24 to 70. Um, I always felt this was a little bit not short enough, which I like this one has the 16 to 80 on it. And this was always not quite long enough. It always felt just out of range or just not wide enough. So I'm kind of glad that this one's wider. And it's also a lot smaller. I mean, look at this. You know, this one, I mean, this now this is an f2.8, so I will say that. That's a 2.8 instead of a 4. But, I mean, that's quite a bit longer. And I know that there is a 15 to 80 or 55 or something like that, 2.8, which I did debate on getting instead of this lens. And I think that was only a little bit longer. So this one, I mean, like, it was a, it's a great lens, but it, it definitely is a lot to, to lug around. I also like the fact that this is a little bit smaller. Like these cameras are are just big. I mean, they're they're you know when you put them on top of each other, I mean you, you look at them like this. Now, granted, this one has a lens on it right now, so it's really hard to tell. But um, you know the the body of this is very noticeable when you take this out compared to a Fuji film. I feel whereas this is a little bit more hidden. And if I had a prime on here, I mean this is a prime right on this, but this looks big. It looks bulky. People notice it. This looks more like a compact. Now. Now, as I was saying about the uh, the full frame for Canon, I think that they're great cameras, but the lenses get too big. And that's where I was bringing this up before. The lenses are just, they get bigger, they get more expensive, and I wasn't quite ready to do that. Uh, I, I, don't need, I don't need a full frame. I'm not doing landscape for photography where I'm selling it. I'm doing more video and, you know, photography, uh, photography of my family or friends and things like that. And that's really, this works really well for that. I might take a few landscape shots or city shots and things like that, but this will work just fine. I just feel that full frame is, is just a little bit bulky to carry around. So these are my opinions and everything. Uh, you know, take, a, take with them what you want, but... Uh, you know, this is my new uh, go-to camera right here, this Fuji X-T4. And uh, we'll see uh, see how it goes over the next few years as I take lots of video with it. Um, obviously, you're not getting samples here. If you want to see samples, there's tons of other videos you can find of uh, with people taking better, probably better video than I'm taking. Uh, but, you know, this is, this is what I've done uh, over the years. And this is for those people that are really old school photographers that really like having these dials on the top and are used to that. This might be the camera for you. You know, this X-T4 is quite um, quite a good camera, actually. I'm, I'm very surprised. I've had a few people that are, are uh, into video and photography, and they've actually played around with it well when, on some of the trips I've been on, and they, they're quite surprised by it, too. You know, a lot of them are uh, Panasonic shooters, I think, for the video, and they like the autofocus, which keeps getting better with updates. I still think Canon has the best autofocus. Um, I think my Canon 50D just never quite worked right with autofocus whereas this thing is just it's spot on it fo it locks focus right away i have to say i mean the the i think this has dual pixel autofocus and it's it's just phenomenal so i do think that this could be a little better but it's much better than what i expected considering a lot of people were complaining about the focusing of it it's been spot on for me uh it takes a little bit longer i feel than the canon but at the same time it's it's pretty instant i mean it's it's you know we're talking you know hundredths of a second to, to tens of a second not not you know like one or two seconds so that's it for these updates. If you have questions, let me know. If you want me to compare anything on these two cameras, let me know as well. And, you know, I'll, I'll do my best to, to compare them. As I said, I mean, this is still going to be used. It's just that uh, part of the reason why I needed another camera is because of time-lapse photography is that I was going to buy another camera, and the question was is to buy another Canon or to switch, and I decided to switch. So this is not a bad camera. I just I think that Canon makes some better ones than this, uh, you know, this one for the price. So that's it, and thank you for watching.